welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 276. I am your host, Norman Sanso, and joining me today is Twilight Genesis. G'day. How are you doing, man? I'm not too bad. A little tired. I've been up running about all day. Ah, that can be good. So, from what I understand, you had to pick up a mate for the coming convention, right? Ah, yeah. Uh, an Eastern State Brony is flown over and spending the week here... Uh, leading up to all of us flying out to see PonyCon next weekend. And also joining us is Starstream. Hello everybody, how are you all doing? Good, good. How about yourself? A bit tiring, but overall it's still fine. Any reason why? Like, what happened? Let's just say there's a lot of things to do, because our uh, work site and all these things got, well, preparation to bring things over to Kuala Lumpur. So work stuff is kind of eating up your time. All right, then. no problem. Yeah, the work, work and con stuff, in a sense. All right, then. So anyway, um, before we proceed to the show, I need to break K-Fit for a bit because as you guys at home may be hearing this, uh, my illustrious co-host may not sound good as possible. And this is because we're doing this on Skype today. Yes, um, the only reason why is Discord is derping on us really bad. Really, really bad. Technical derp. True that. It wouldn't be an NBS show without derps. But anywho, that won't be affecting our episode for the future. This is just for this week, so please bear with us. And talking about future episodes, as for next week's episode, um, well, I have to say that probably the chances of a new episode on its regular schedule, probably... They won't be one because of, well, conventions and stuff. Probably I'll be doing some things, uh, video probably and whatnot. So expect to see that in the future. Um, what I can tell you guys is a live panel, like what I did last year for the Friendship Express. So do expect a video to pop up on the channel. I do hope that I get it out on time. But as for reviews, shows and whatnot, that will go out smoothly, no problem. <clears throat> so, anywho, um, let's head into the news. And, well, in our first news, Funko. You guys know Funko, right? Like, we mentioned them last week before with the Sea Pony movie thingy that they're doing. Yeah. And, well, one of us here might be getting one soon. So, yay, I wonder who. Ah, uh, it's a mystery. Hmm. Well, if you guys are down under, um, and you guys know the pop culture store called Zing Pop Culture Australia, it seems that they're having a pre-order special, uh, pre-order all four for the price of $70 in store and online. So, so hi, it looks like you're up to bat. No, I would be if I wasn't broke. We're, we're not asking you to do it, but still. Uh, what, how do you feel, man? Like, this is your neck of the woods. Well, it's always good to uh, get all the shiny new things before anyone else. Which is a rarity, which is a rarity. Usually Australia gets things last. Speaking of rarity, she's not one of these pop vinyls. There's only four of the main six. And I don't think she was in the list for last week, was it? Last week, or was it last two weeks? I don't remember. We We did a lot of news. Regarding this, but was she in it? I, I don't remember. Don't think so. So far, for, for these, these new pop vinyls, the only ones that have been announced have been Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, Twilight, and Pinkie Pie. Yeah, and there's two variants for Twilight and Rainbow Dash, if I Rainbow do remember Dash. right. Yeah. So, that's gonna be interesting. But yeah, um, Funko Mini 70? I, I don't know, I remember buying Funko Pops in Australia for 10 dollars so having them at 70 uh, I, I don't know maybe it's chucked up because it's pre-order and then it, because it's movie merch and not just uh generic merch now they'll find any reason to, to raise a price in australia all right then so yeah if you guys are down under this is a good option hey by the way twice have you heard of zinc pop culture it it rings a bell, but I don't think we really have it here in the West Coast. At least I I couldn't think of a a store that I've seen around. Is it part of EB Games? 
Not as far as I'm aware. Hmm. All right. All right. Because I do remember a store that merged with, um, or not really merged, but it's part of EB. Like EB has its games, while the back end has its, um, uh, pop culture items like posters and whatnot. I I do remember that. I I I, I I've checked about it, and it's a uh, part of the EB Games oh. and GameStop. Ah, yes, cool. So I was right. Ah, alrighty then. So no wonder the price increase. But you know what? If you're not a big fan of the Funko Pops, then how about this? Remember when we talked about Hascon and its exclusive items and what it has inside? Well, it seems that we have a look inside. Um, it seems that there's a few f- things kind of interesting. Um, notepad, comic books, movie storybooks, plush, and many more. Like this loot box of stuff has a lot of Nice things. Ah, uh, so nice to see so many nice merchandise in it. <laughs> yeah, true. And also t-shirts. I like the rainbow plush. It's cute and it doesn't have the, the same uh, tra- tra- trademark lazy uh, parts to it that a lot of the official plushes tend to have. No spaghetti mane. That, that, that's a bonus. But looking at it right, Twy, um, that'd be a sea pony rainbow dash. Yeah, I, I was wondering why its tail was all flattened out. I'm like, oh, wait, no, it must be the sea pony, which is cool. Because yeah. sea pony dash as a plush, I, I can I can get behind that. Yay, that's something to look forward to. So yeah, if you're going to Hascon, uh, probably check this one out. This is something cool. I, I wish I can get them, <laughs> uh, but we ain't. So sad. Ain't easy for us to get any merchandise. Mm, true, uh, true. But you know what's easy? Like, you know what's easy to get, probably. Um, it seems that we might be able to get the Pony Pirate plush. Yay! So, uh, with the movie coming out really, really soon, October 6th this year, um, we might be looking at this stuff in the stores. So, um, it's the ponies dressed up as pirates. And they look good. I don't mind getting one, especially um, Pirate Princess Twilight. The only reason why is the outfit she has, it looks stacked. Like, yeah, that, that's worth the money. Actually, all yeah. the outfits looks awesome. I, I think from the looks of it, it's actually they, like, they sewn on the fabric on the part of the, part of the body or something. Nah, I, I don't think it's sewn on. I, this one, I, from, from what I can see of this one, it's probably um, printed on or ironed uh, on. Yeah. It seems that yeah, way. Yeah, I think that's the better option, yeah. Yeah, it's much cheaper and whatnot, but yeah. But it does make some parts like a bit look weird. Like, oh. for example, like, especially the eyebrow part because due to the way that they are printed on or something. But still, it's one of those things where, okay, um, they're trying. But still, <laughs> if you have money to really, really spend... Uh, custom plush are available, but they're stupid expensive. But it depends on which makers you're getting. Still, and a thirty dollar yep. versus a hundred dollar plush. Yeah, no. <laughs> or you kind of forget someone own own one. <laughs> uh, no, you you don't count. You you're the one percenter. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one percent is increasing. <laughs> oh god. But still, but still, um, this is something interesting. Um. From what I can tell here, the going price is going to be at... Um, I think they have not announced the price yet. Okay, but from the Sea Pony version, they're at $19, $20. Let's just say $20, $23, depending on which pony you want. Uh, but strangely enough, on Toy Wiz, um, Rainbow Dash Pirate, Pinky Pirate, and Twilight Pirate are sold out. They're out of stock. So, whew, that's something interesting. Not even a pre-order or anything like that. So yeah, um, if you want your pirate pony plush, um, be sure to check it out at any of your local store. So if you still want to enjoy the ponies and their movie magicness, uh, well, the terrible segue aside, um, the movie magic DVD is out. Remember that thing that we talked about before? Yeah, it's out. And it seems that it's a bit lacking. From what I can tell here, it does has the three specials, uh, Mirror Magic, Movie Magic, and Dance Magic, but none of the specials, like the one that they're doing now. So that's kind of disappointing. 
and not even any uh, behind the scene talk from the directors or not and not even a sing along so yeah that's kind of disappointing and also from what i heard the color for the dvd from short fraction if i'm not mistaken it's not good they messed the color up that sounds disappointing no special features and they messed up the color i mean i'm still gonna buy it because equestria girls yeah i understand man like i'm frustrated too now it makes me think like are they going to release another version of this with all of the specials i mean that would be cool but still Considering they're doing, it seems like one of the summer summertime shorts every week. We probably get a DVD for all of the summertime shorts together. Yeah, that would make more sense. Like, okay, I know you want to push Equestria Girls and whatnot, but like the movie magic specials plus the uh, summertime shorts, I I think that would be bang for your buck. Like, even if you don't give us the, what you call the special features like um, commentary or whatnot, those shorts will make up in volumes. Uh, but well, that's not our problem. That's Hasbro and Shot Factory's problem to think about. We here just buy stuff, so yay. But I do wonder, do even this also ap- apply to the normal episodes? That's those which are released on the DVDs, like... I don't know, sometimes the, what you call it, they release two episodes in one DVD or something like that? Oh, those kind of DVDs are, mm, how do I put this? Do they even still provide those, what you call it, behind the scenes or all these things? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Like, those kind of DVDs are mm, confusing to me. Like, I, I know what you're talking about. Like, um, one DVD has four episodes and whatnot. Yeah, I, I do know of them. But, Nobody really wants to buy them because you have 26 episodes and one DVD contains probably about four episodes. So four times how many DVDs to get a whole entire season. So you need to do the math there. The average for a 26 episode series is about, uh, depending on how they do it, six to eight DVDs depending on if they do four episodes per DVD or if they put five episodes on a couple of the DVDs. Mm, And that would look terrible on a shelf compared to a box set. It depends. Uh, Individual volumes only have like four episodes. If they've released it in chronological order, that's usually what you get with the old school box sets where where you would get the the six or so K, uh, volumes of DVDs as opposed to how they do fat packs now. Oh yeah, but still, I, I remember the season six DVD box set. I think that's more worth it in terms of value and um, space because, come on, a DVD box right now is kind of thicker and it's kind of eating up space. So you just imagine if we have five boxes of those and a box set of, well, the current Season 6 one will cover up two uh, DVD or three DVD boxes. And you know what, that's semantics. Uh, the other reason is it's going to be really, really expensive to buy those DVDs to collect them all. Like, just getting five to six DVDs, like, you're spending about $60 if it's six. Like, $10 per DVD, I'm guessing. And collect- collecting all six for the entire season, it's going to cost you. It's, it's worse here. You're, you're going to be lucky to get the individual DVD volumes for less than twenty. Oh, yeah. So you're looking at between twenty and thirty dollars per DVD volume if it's new. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I like the box set even more. It's cost efficient. So probably what it'll cost you half the price of the entire set. Anywhere from half as much as buying all the DVDs individually to maybe 10, 20 bucks less than buying all of them separately. It, it varies wildly, really. That's why I like that scenario better than buying it, well, singles. And, well, at least if you can't wait or want to save space, there's always the online version you can always buy it from i think they have it on amazon or something like that and watch something i know they have it on itunes but i'm not 100 sure about the other um, online distributors so if you do know 
that's one way to catch your pony episodes. If not, um, DVD is probably the way. And last news is, Joshi will returning as co-story editor for Season 8. So if you guys got no idea who George Heber is, he used to be a writer for My Little Pony Friendship's Magic. He wrote such episodes like Castlemania, and yeah, that's all I can see right now on the wiki page. My eye's not that good. But still, uh, he used to be a writer for the show until he stopped and worked for... I'm not 100% sure, uh, but he was working on the Skylanders uh, series. So, yay, that's interesting. He used to work on the... He also written two M, uh, MLP, the Equestria Girls Rainbow Rocks and animated shorts. Oh. And also the My Little Pony, the Equestria Girls Friendship Games. He is also the lead story editor for Season 6. Yeah, yeah, I now remember that. Yeah, yeah, so that's cool too. So, he's coming back for Season 8. So, yay, who doesn't like a good writer? Well, some probably won't agree with me, but still, I, I think he's okay. Like, he did Rainbow Rocks, right? Yes. I have no I idea. I just know he was involved with Season 6. I don't pay attention to the writers except for M.I. Larson, but that's just because <laughs> of how much pandering he does that I can't go anywhere when he does something without hearing about it. <laughs> you mean he threw pandas at us? Oh, yeah. All of the pandas. He has a catapult specially designed just for them. <laughs> ah, yes. Oh, he also did the gift of the mod pie. Huh, all right. So yeah, uh, we're not in our A game when it comes to writers, but we know a good episode when we see it. And having him back on uh, to co-write or co-story edit for season eight is going to be interesting. So yeah, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Certainly going to be interesting. And looking at his IMDb page and what he's done, uh, he did top bolt where the apple lies to where and back again part one and two pony point of view every little thing she does viva las pegasus you know what there's a lot of good stories even dungeons and discord so i said he is good i you know what i i i'm saying this he is a good writer i i can't wait to see what he does for season eight so yay much fun to be had yeah, it would definitely be good to see if he uh, can top his work from season six, because there were some episodes in there that I know didn't go well with the fandom. Well, from what I can tell in today's episode, no, you you can't make everyone happy. No. Nah. But anyway, that's the news for this week. So, you know, here's where the, and you know, here comes the part where I usually say what we've been doing with our week. But, you know, I'm going to change things up a bit because what are we going to do next week? <laughs> if you guys haven't guessed, next week, all three of us on this episode here right now are going to meet for, well, uh, I won't say for the very first time. I know Twy and Star here are going to meet for the very first time. And for me, it's going to be the second time to meet them. But still, all three of us will be in the same room and talking about Pony News and discussion of stuff for the very first time together doing a show live so yay it's Ooh. almost as bad an idea it's almost as bad an idea as letting silver quill next uh near explosives what could go wrong right <laughs> it's, it's I don't going know. to be a lot of fun yep that's why you mentioned uh, bad ideas right there's a bad idea going on right now um silver quill is sitting next to maddie what do you think is going to happen? Well, um, most likely we're going to be hearing about the large hospital bill that Silverquill has to deal with after putting his foot in his mouth. <laughs> True, that, and also Lightning Bliss is sharing the table with them too. So, you know what? The more I think about it, the more Silver is accident prone. Hmm. Maybe it's just the people around Silver that are accident prone, and he just happens to be the unlucky one who gets hit with everything. Probably. <laughs> but uh, that's BronyCon. That was last week's news. Now it's our turn. Like, if you guys um, are hearing this, and if you guys are... I hope you guys are interested, because all three of us are going to go to SeaPonyCon in Bangkok, Thailand. 
if any of you guys are going, do meet us there. Um, do say hi. Yep. An event starts at 19th of August 2017 at 10 a.m. Uh, pre-reg starts at 9. So one of the few things that is an attraction for this is, well, you get us, the host of the MBS shows, and also Michelle Kreber. She's going to be there, voice of Apple Bloom and singing voice for CD Well. It's also going to be Tridashy and a handful of uh, fandom maker. musicians and PV, yeah. MB makers, yep. Yep, yep. So, yeah, I mean, there's them, there's us, there's Michelle. What else do you need? Well, probably some more celebrities, but hey, uh, it's their first time trying, and this is the first convention to have a voice actor to come to Southeast Asia. So, yay, that's cool. So excited for it. Yep, yep. So, if you guys are going and interested in catching us, we'll be doing our panel, uh, co- strangely called the MBS Show panel, on Saturday at the main hall at one thirty to 2.30. Uh, what we'll be doing, so it's basically going to be another regular MBS Show episode where we talk about the news, but mostly we're going to focus on, well, our friendship. Since MLP is a show about friendship, so why not? Talk about friendship, right? Logic, right? Yes, agree. Well, not just about friendship, we also talk how we actually met. <laughs> well, that's friendship in a nutshell. Yeah. So, I, I know there's a few stories here, like, when the idea pops up, it sounds simple, but after hearing stories from Star and also you, Twy, it makes it sound hilariously insane and really really strange I think that's how everyone's story is like I mean from the first when you for the first time when you hear it it's like oh it sounds maybe like different perspective it's like oh it sounds weird or something oh true that true that but um, we do we may have a guest appearance by the one of the shareholders or one of the guys who's involved or who made this all happen, um, Daniel Anthony or St. Pinky. He might join us there, probably I'm not hundred percent sure. But hearing his story of how friendship works with us, that's another story there. So it's gonna be interesting. Um what else? What else? What else? Um I, I think that's about it. Uh, can't wait to meet you guys in person. I know there's a few of you out there when SweetieBot sent the message out in the Twitterverse telling people that, hey, we'll be there. There's a few likes. I know um, Two Pines Please did a like and also other people. Here's to you, my friend. And um, what else? Uh, I'm, I'm a lost for words. All I know is I can't wait to meet you guys there. Like, come and meet me and talk. Like, just talk like friends. Uh, be sure to be respectful of others and be sure to have a safe and great time. Well, that's for what I'm planning. Twy, what about you? What do you have planned? Uh, well, aside from being at the panel and trying not to make myself look like an idiot, I'm, as true, uh, I did put up an update video recently to my channel and I'm going to be trying to get into the swing of getting things done for that again. So hopefully before this month is over, I'll have both the In the VIP room, the interview with you, Norman, up on the channel, as well as my latest Why Talks video. And then after that, I'm working on two new Pokemon videos, uh, which are sort of like tag-style videos uh, that Birdkeeper Toby did. Uh, one being the What Would My po- Pokemon Evil Team or Organization Be? And the other being my Pokemon League. So you know, what if I was the Pokemon champion? So I'm going to be working on those, though I'm not sure how much work I'm going to get done in this next week. So a lot of this may not start showing signs of getting finished until after we get back from z But still, the plan now, um, you have an outlet to produce videos easily, which is the convention. Um, you can just walk around pointing cameras at people, which I don't recommend because it's kind of rude, but there's an option for you to get more content, so yay, right? Maybe. I don't really have much in the way of a camera at the moment. You could still use your mobile phone, right? It has a, a video cam in there. Yeah, that's that's all I've got. 
And I don't know how well that camera is. I haven't used it really yet. <laughs> well, it's time to experiment, my friend. <laughs> and what about you, Star? This gonna be more towards like helping out with the work stuff. Was when I'm going to KL after that, then heading to Thailand for a bit. Then, well, besides your work stuff that I know you can talk about for the convention thing, you're part of the con crew, right? Yeah, I'm part of the con crew. I'm part in a way you can say that I'm part of a con crew. I'm also as an attendee also <laughs> and a panelist. <laughs> Basically, you can say I got three roles in one. <laughs> This you know convention. What? Here's the thing. Here's, here's the interesting thing. Your situation here's no different from my experience at uh, the Fresh Express, but you're here attending and then volunteering and then got roped in into my panel. You're experiencing three things in one. When I did it, I came there because panel, and then um, I got roped into helping. Well, I didn't get roped in. I volunteered myself. I just jump in and do stuff. And I help sell merch. And then I had panels to do. So it's like really confusing stuff happening. Like, poof, really, really confusing. But still, it's going to be fun. All I know is uh, being at the con there is going to be fun. Yep, agree. Let's get back on track and let's do what have we been doing with our week this week. So, Twy, what have you been doing, man? I've been watching The Oblongs, an old Adult Swim cartoon from early 2000s, uh, which was apparently, from what my friends have been telling me, was uh, one of the first, if not the first major role uh, Will Ferrell ever had as a voice actor. That's interesting. It's pretty pretty good dark humor show. I, I quite enjoy it. My favorite character is Creepy Susie. It, it might be a bit a bit obscure, but there's a, a book written by a man named Angus Oblong uh, called Creepy Susie and 13 Other Tales of Tragic Children or something like that. It's it's not a kid's storybook. It, it really isn't, but it's hilarious and morbid. And a lot of the characters in the Oblong's cartoon are from the, those stories including Creepy Susie, who is my favorite character. So I'm, I'm glad that you're enjoying that. Um, Star, what about you? A bit of an interesting week. Well, these few days at least. Today was uh, more towards I uh, just watch, watch uh, uh, a lot of TV shows. I was bored and then jump on EQD chat and someone, they were watching Rick and Morty oh. season three. I was like, just join them, watch a bit after that. Then we decided to watch a bit of uh, Milo's Murphy Law. Oh, Milo Murphy though. I heard a lot of good things. It's actually quite nice. It's despite it's made by the team who's behind Phineas and Ferb, and the main character is voiced by Weird Al Yankovic. I heard that. Like that's one of the shows I'm interested in checking out. All right. I still need to check out uh, Hanazuki though because I haven't finished my season one, and also been a lot of busy because the convention is like one week left. So everyone is nervous excited for it. <laughs> true that. True that. And as for me, well, uh, let's see. I've been spending my time watching Voltron's Defend, uh, Legendary Defenders Season 3. So that was one heck of a ride. Like, I got no idea where they're going to be heading this one. From the things that I saw and things that are expected to be happening, I got no idea. So that's something to look forward to um, besides Voltron. I also did catch a few episodes for, well, here's the thing about American cartoons. Their schedule is not set in stone. So like this week, I've seen Ninja Turtles. Um, the whole Usarigi Yojinbo saga is finished. So that's good. Uh, what else have I been watching or doing? Um, uh, I'm not 100% sure. Um, ah, yes. Overwatch. Overwatch. Uh, Summer Games. Lucio Balls Up. Um, new patches for the characters. So, mm, yeah, Overwatch is fun. Been doing that. So, nothing new really. So, yeah, I guess my week's been all same old, same old. So anyway, um, <clears throat> if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at NBS Show, and my Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And Twy, where can the good people find you? 
They can find me under Double Point Productions on Facebook and YouTube. You can find me on Twitter at Midnight underscore Pint. And you can find me as Twilight Genesis on both DeviantArt and Film Fiction. Awesome, awesome. And how about you, Star? Uh, people can find me on my DeviantArt, Angelicore XX, where I post some pictures of my stuff. <laughs> I have to remind people, or I have to remind myself, that you are an avid collector of the Bill of Bear plush. So I think for anyone who does see you there, do give Star a chat or do talk to him about the plush and how to get them and how to take care of them. I'm sure you'll get good advice from him. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on polyvalive.com. Links will be in the show notes. And also please do subscribe to the MBA Show Reviews and Discussion on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. On that show, you have me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song, and Guest of the Week talk about the My Little Pony episode, comic, and movies. That's including the one that's coming on October 6th, and also the Equestria Girls uh, movie that will be out somehow on DVD or in local theaters somehow. So we'll be reviewing those. And sometimes, if we feel like it, we'll talk about something else. Um, last time we talked about Kung Pao and to the fist. And that one was, ah, <laughs> uh, that was a fun episode. Oh wow. You were in that one, right, Twy? Yes, yes, <laughs> it was a really fun one to watch, uh, especially yeah. after having stayed up until like 3am the night before we recorded, uh, <laughs> rewatching the movie because I had the DVD on hand for like a week and <laughs> had no time except for just that moment to watch it. <laughs> Oh wow! So, it's... and it was it was very funny also to hear Norman being broke the whole, <laughs> the oh, whole yeah. podcast. Yeah. So we we tried to break him as much as possible, but we we didn't quite get the point we we're after. Yeah, you, that you, just you... means me and Silver will have to try again with something else. Yeah, uh, probably the room. You should guys do the room. I haven't even watched the room yet. I really need, I need to rewatch it, man. Like before watching the disaster artist, that's something. But anywho, uh, you can catch that insanity there. And also, uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. And with every support, you'll get full access to deleted contents and Patreon exclusive. And you also get early access to the MBS show review and discussion. Um, podcasts. Usually it will be a day out early before it goes live on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and also YouTube. And you also get a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I like to thank Lurker Cat, Twilight Genesis, Nam Dragatoria, Starstream, Master of Lag, and also Jeffrey. Thank you y'all for the awesome, awesome support. Could have done it without you guys. You're welcome, Norman. You're welcome, Norman. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Twilight Genesis. And this is Pastry. And we'll guys see you, well, <laughs> and this is literally it, SeaponyCon, next week. So, yeah, oh, hope to see you guys there. It'll be fun. It will be really, really fun. So, see ya. Cheers. Hype and see ya. <laughs> 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 <laughs>